Okay guys, welcome to another 8-bit face-off kerfuffle. This week we're taking a look at the classic BC's quest for tyres. You play the part of BC, I'm presuming, um, and he's got to try and rescue his girlfriend who's been kidnapped by somebody or another, I'm not quite sure. Now this is a Spectrum one, if you can't tell. Never actually played the Spectrum one. In fact, the only one, the only version of this I ever actually played was the Commodore 64 and it was big favourite of mine. It was, I always thought it was completely original, you know, really really nice kind of cartoon graphics. Totally original. Now the game's fairly simple, you can move left and right, and you can also jump and duck. You duck by pulling the joystick down and you jump by pressing the joystick up the way. All the, the different systems control the same, I think. Now you can also, when you're actually in mid-air, when you jump up, you can actually move left and right for a short space of time. <laughs> now you can also speed up if you hold down the fire button and hold the joystick to the right, and it speeds you up, and if you hold it to the left of the joystick, sorry, with the fire button, you slow down. I think you get more points the quicker you go, I'm not quite sure. But it certainly makes it harder anyway. Obviously being the spectrum it's got limited colours, so the uh, the choice of <laughs> colours are slightly odd to say the least. Time this properly. Go! Ow! Arse! Anyway, that's a Spectrum one. Let's take a look at another one. Right, if you can't tell, this one is the Coleco version. That's a giveaway with the sign, with the, the sort of screen uh, shot of all the different levels. Quite, quite unusual to see. Uh, well, I'm saying it's quite unusual. Maybe it's not unusual, but a game that was released for the computers. It's quite unusual to actually see on the consoles. Although I think this was the only console that I actually came out for. Whoa! It just speeds up there. <laughs> now what I like about this version, I like the way he's kind of leaning forwards. Although is that his arm sticking out the back? I think it is. What's a bit odd is the fact that the colour doesn't actually... They've not kind of filled in all the colour. Right? Okay, when it gets to the end of this sort of level, it zooms up. You can see they've sort of changed the uh, the graphics ever so slightly, but really nice and, nice and detailed. <laughs> High score, pi score, or was it P1 score? Look at what these guys look like, they don't look anything like crocodiles. Right, uh, you can see there his arm is now filled in properly. But oddly, you can see the colours kind of bleeding from, uh, from the sprite. I don't know whether that's, I don't know whether that's an emulation thing or whether that was just a, the way the sort of Coleco does graphics. Yeah, you can see there again the colour has disappeared from his arm. Anyway, I'm just being, I'm being very, very picky because I think this is actually a really, really nice version. Yeah, what you want to do here is stand beneath the, the bird which carries you across. I'm assuming it's a, a lava pit or something. I love the way the, the hair moves about in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> now, to get over that, you've got to go full welly, which I'd completely forgotten about. I mean, it's one of these games, it's it's kind of a, a memory game, similar, you know, you've got to sort of know exactly what's coming. Oops, I did it. Now, 
Now, there was a sequel to this game, BC... No, Grog's, Grog's Revenge, that's what it is. So, we must play the part of Grog. Oh, for one more go, I think. <laughs> and fail miserably. Yeah, that's the Coleco vision. That's actually really, really nice. Apart from the slight sort of bleeding and the sort of lack of colour in the sprites, that's actually excellent. Right, this one is the one I remember. This is the C64 one. You notice tires is T I R E S. And we're off. Really, really good graphics. I love the, uh, the sort of the, the parallax scrolling as well with the clouds. I think they could have done more with the character. Actually, it's quite a quite a likable little character. We caveman. Not a lot in the way of sound, but you know what? The sound actually adds. It really, it's it adds perfectly to what you're doing. You know, you can imagine you're riding along a little unicycle made of uh, stone. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure. You know what this benefit to going quicker is? Do you get? See, that's that's turtles. They didn't look like turtles in the Coleco Vision version. Hey! I notice my score isn't going up any. Is it like a taxi? The further you go, the bigger score. Or in taxi's case, eh? Uh, the higher your fear, I don't know. All oh, right, okay. Is it when you jump over a rock, possibly? I'm just trying to see. Yeah, that's what it is. It's when you jump over something. So I'm really not sure why you'd want to go quicker, Mr. Daisy, because it's hard enough normally without making it even more difficult. Yeah, this is a bit where you've got to try and make use of this sort of moving in mid-air. What you want to try and do is get the rock to coincide with where a stone is, so you only have to do the one jump. Now this was quite an early game, I think it was 1983 it came out, so there wasn't a version um, for the Amstrad, and I couldn't see any for the BBC or Auric, any of the earlier computers. And this is where you have to start building your speed up, I think. Before the big jump, and I'm not doing it, and I'm going to feel miserably. <laughs> yeah, anyway, listen, that's the C64 one, that is excellent. Right, this next one is the Apple II. This, uh, <laughs> it does its own thing as far as graphics are concerned, it looks slightly different. It's even got, uh, I was going to say it's got parallax scrolling, has it? I'm not quite sure. Right, the movement's a bit slow for this part. Ah, right, these are, yeah, okay, yep. They are turtles. You can see that they're turtles. Zot! I like the fact that his hair flaps about. Maybe it's windy, I was going to say, even when he's not moving, but possibly it's windy. We shall give him the benefit of the doubt. So yeah, it's slightly different looking from
from the other versions. But it still, it still looks nice. It kind of looks more like a kind of cartoon. You can imagine a, a cartoon strip looking like this rather than another one. What's interesting, there only appears to be... Is it four colours? There's a wee bird thing. You've got, oh, you've got purple, blue, white and black, I think. That's it. Oh, and you've also got orange for the score as well. Not quite sure how many colours the, the Apple II could display. Come on, where's this infernal lava pit? Here it is. Jump! <laughs> right, he's got me by the hair. <laughs> I like the way his foot kind of curls under when he jumps up. That's still was to pull the pull the wheel up. <laughs> yeah, it's possibly not the best executed version, but it's got a kind of got a nice character about it. I've never actually completed this game, which is probably a shameful admission because I don't think the game is particularly difficult and it's I don't think it's very long either, but that's more just down to my lack of uh, <coughs> gaming skills. You also notice in this one you don't have the wee guy with the You don't have the wee guy with the, the big club. Anyway, that is the Apple II one. Oh, there's the club thing there. Hey! Right, next one is the MSX. Interestingly, I think this one kind of looks a bit more like... Does this look more like the Coleco version, I think? The way it's kind of tilting forwards? I think the one in the... I think the C64 and the Spectrum one is more upright. Oddly, I can't seem to speed up. I mean, I'm doing 16, but if you try and speed up any more, it just goes back down to 10 again. So it's going very, very slow. I'm not sure why that is. be here for a long time. <laughs> oh, was that speech? I think it was. And it seems to have rocketed a lot quicker. <laughs> I don't know why it was going so slow there. That's hard. Oh no, we're going to go back to the beginning again with a really, really slow part. Alright, okay, it's letting me just... That was only one life. What are you talking about? It's not game over. Just because I saw the high score part coming up. That was silly. Yeah, it's a very, very, very simple game, but then I guess when you think about it, most games are pretty simple. There's very, very few games, especially <coughs> the early games, you know, have got any real. So they, 
Ah, right, I've got you right. They're tortoises or turtles with their heads facing you. That's what it is. They look more like dinosaur heads. Hey! Now, see, that's what he looks like. That sprite is what he looks like in the C64 and Spectrum one. He doesn't lean forwards in that version, but when he gets to the flat, he seems to lean forwards like he does in the uh, one. There we go. He wants to get greater speed, obviously. And prepare for liftoff. There we go. It's annoying when games insist when you have score between every life. Yeah, anyway, that is the MSX one. And that is really good as well. I've not seen a bad version so far. And the last one to look at, guys, is um, one of the earlier ones. This is the Atari 800 one. This one's probably got more in common with the C64 one. Very, very similar. Although you can see the the nicer colour palette. You've got a sort of lighter green and a dark green for the grass. This one feels a bit snappier. It's kind of slightly quicker, quicker to react as well. I appear to have started with like, infinite lives because I've got 74 wheels here. He's also got the most kind of realistic skin colour. Dang. So yeah, that is the last version we're going to take a look at. Um, what have we done about the Spectrum? Spectrum, there's, I mean, to be honest, there's not a bad version amongst them. Spectrum 1 obviously lacks the colour um, of the other ones. I mean, you're red, you know, for goodness sake. but. You know, that's to be expected. They could have gone for a monochrome look, possibly, which would look slightly better. But uh, yeah, it's reactive. It, it reacts really well. Looks nice. Um, Coleco 1 is nice. It's got a bit of, like I say, colour bleeding. You see the sprite. The colour doesn't kind of fill the sprite properly. Oh, we're getting further than we've ever got. Um, but still a nice version. C64 one is excellent. Really, really good. That was the one that I played back in the day. The Apple II looks slightly different. Um, it's probably the, I would say, probably the poorest one out of all of them, but it's still not a bad version. Did I grab it? Um, I don't know what was the very first version of this. I'm assuming it might have been Apple II. Not too sure. MSX one is really nice again. It's even got some speech. Um, the Tari 800 one is fantastic. Um, I'd probably go for the Tari as my favourite version. Nothing to do with the fact that I'm getting further in this one than any other version. But uh, I just think it, it it just plays that bit kind of quicker and it's got a really nice colour palette. So 
so I'm going to go for the Tari 100 as my favourite version of BC Quest, sorry, BC's Quest for Tires, um, but there's not a bad version. Play any of these and you'll have a great time. Really good little game. Hey, hey, there we go. So anyway guys, that is it. Thank you very, very much for watching.